There we go, first swinging Steph Wheeler grabbing the point there. She looks a little more relaxed here in the in this second set. And I guess that's that, that'll do it after you've got the first set in the bag. So uh, let's see how they go. Oh, and Scotland's right back at him, having a nice free swing there too and finding the, finding the open court and the cross court. So point for point, starting the second set. Interestingly, Sanj, just looking at the, the bios of the Scots, one of their players is actually 46 years old, according to the FIVB bio, born in 1970. So, has, you would think, have been around the beach volley the, the volleyball scene. I think they've played a bit of indoor volleyball, but been around there for, for a while. Yeah, spot on. I don't know if Steph and Sarah's ages combined would get to that, but uh, being the younger players, but, you know, often that can be a, a big advantage on the beach too, Roscoe, just having that, that level head, uh, being able to compose yourself and that experience and, and number of years playing at an elite level, even whether it's indoor or beach volleyball, uh, can be a real advantage in the mental game. So let's see if they can use that to their advantage here and, uh, and maybe try and close this match up knowing they do have to win this uh, second set to, to have a chance to take it to a third, whereas the Aussies will close out the match if they win this set. And again, the Scots just getting out that little break again, 4-2. They've been, they've been able to do this all match, but it's just uh, maybe it's just the inexperience of playing at this level, Sanj, but they're just unable to, to close it out. And you can really see the Australians scrambling here to, uh, to keep in this point. But maybe that's just the experience, not able to close out sets after getting in dominant positions. Oh, they closed out that point right there, Ross, after a bit of a fight back and forth and uh, lots and lots of digs in that. I mean, you normally see them trying to get the dig set spike, but uh, there was more digs in that rally than, than most. But um, yeah, you're right there, Roscoe, and that'll often happen, at, you know, experienced players, but unless they're experienced at a really high level, the closing out of the sets can be that most challenging thing. I'm just noticing as, uh, as she goes back to surf here, we've got an Olympic rings tattoo. So I reckon we have an Olympian here I, with the indoor volleyball team. So we're going to do a bit more research here. But, um, you know, often you see, you know, if you've been to the Olympics, most Olympians will have an Olympic rings tattoo. So that's a bit of, uh, a bit of reconnaissance and intel work we're doing up here in the commentary booth. He's just making that, making that dig there up towards referee Darren Grimsy, but he's having no part of it. He's just signalling Point Australia, Sarah Battaglin, go back to serve. Again, great serving pressure there from Sarah. Just that nice float serve, and you may not be able to see it from the, the webcam, but it is a little bit swirly down here as that wind picks up, and we change from a little bit of showers and rain back to still conditions. So, yeah, just a little bit, yeah, you can see, just a little bit challenging there as that, that ball just swirls around. So if anyone is dialing in from Scotland and watching this live stream match, we'd love you guys to comment and if you've got some fun facts about the girls or you want us to shout out to, to any of the supporters back there, make sure you, you shoot us a message on the Facebook page or on the live stream on, our, on the YouTube channel and we'll, uh, we'll make sure we'll get that out there. And just wide and a referee signaling end change and that will bring us up at seven all, all tied up in this uh, second set. And Sanj, nothing gets past your eagle eye. You've spotted a tattoo out there. 
Yeah, the Olympic rings, Ross, and uh, there's only one type of person that has the Olympic ring tattoos on them, and that's an Olympian. So we are going to do a bit more, bit more evidence, but we're tipping London 2012 indoor volleyball. Great swing there from the Aussie girls. That's what we want to see, making the great transition play there and bringing up point number eight. That's what it is. Great uh, conversation out there. Sarah, really willing Steph on there to make that point. And as the more experienced player of the two, that'll be a huge part of her role here in this match. Oh, she was all over that one and she saw it hit the line. Great shot there by, by the Scots, really turning that ball inside out and, uh, and finding the line. It's a great, great shot, holds the defender and really makes a run later that line and uh, brings up point number eight for Scotland. Oh, a little net touch there from Steph Wheeler, which gives Scotland the point. But you see that same inside out shot, but Sarah Battaglane had that one covered there. She saw it before and uh, she was able to read that ball early and make that dig down the line. Unfortunately, they weren't able to convert that point. 9 10 Scotland. And that ball just dying. It looked like it was floating way long and, and Sarah Battaglane thought the same, but it just died in that breeze. And as it see it just swirling around a little bit out there, which makes it a little bit challenging for the players. Oh, and again, this one literally catching the back millimeter of the line. I reckon Sarah, if uh, she was playing in the Australian Open for tennis, she would have called for the Hawkeye then. She uh, had a good long look at that, but it was uh, definitely long uh, right on the baseline of that, uh, that sideline. So we will see them take a little bit of a break here and just recompose. So, um, Martin Johnson tells us that uh, on Facebook that apparently there is no indoor beach for volleyball facilities in Scotland. This is exactly what they train in all winter, apparently. Thank you, Martin, for that insight. Uh, go to our Facebook page if you want to add more insights. If you know a little bit of background about the girls, let us know because uh, we'd like everyone else to know Scotland are not regulars on the tour, so it is great to see them here and putting up a fight too, which is fantastic to see. So that's interesting, no indoor facilities in Scotland. Well, well aren't they good on them for bringing their own weather as well? <laughs> I'm sure of it. Uh, well, they'll be feeling right at home here on uh, Manly Beach today. Oh, great vision there and great ball control too there from the girls and just chipping that ball around into the open court and that'll bring up a 12-11 lead in this second set. And on our Facebook page, we've certainly got some Scottish supporters who are watching. It must be uh, middle of the night there, it must be about midnight or maybe, uh, maybe just before midnight in Scotland. So staying up late to watch the girls in action. And I hope you're willing them on here to, uh, to try and get them over the line in this second set. Having lost the first set 22-20 after holding two set points at one stage, 2018. So really desperate to get back into this one.
And don't we love our beach volleyball fans, Ross? They are committed, they are dedicated and getting up at all hours of tonight, at the night to uh, be able to support their girls. And, uh, and as a result, Scotland has grabbed another point. So 14-12 here in the second set. There we go, and that same corner has been absolutely peppered in this second set. And uh, Steph Wheeler finds the sand there and brings up point number 13. And I can give you some more. The cheer fans are fantastic. This is uh, Jen Downey, or Jen Downs, who says that uh, Lynn Beatty, Lynn Beatty used to play for her club, Sue Ragazzi in Glasgow, and Mel Cooch used to play for the city of Edinburgh. And apparently Lynn captained the first ever Great Britain Indoor Olympic women's team at London 2012. There you go. And Mel has played for both Scotland and England indoor. So Sandy, you're exactly right. In fact, Lynn was captain of the Great British, uh, the Great Britain Indoor Olympic women's team in London in 2012. So she deserves those Olympic rings. And speaking of Olympians, I just had one just uh, wander past me, Miss Kerry Pothast, and she actually had a training session. She took the girls from Scotland on the sand a couple of days ago just to help them acclimatise to, to Manly, and uh, their fitness trainer worked with Kerry and Nat on one of their Olympic campaigns. So a bit of a connection there with Australia and Scotland. And, um, yeah, Kez said she had a great session with them on the sand and may have taught them too many things. They're leading 16-13 in this second set. Oh, great work by the Aussies there. Just changing up the angles. So they're running the back set there, opening up that court, taking advantage of that cross-court swing. They mean business. Sarah's willing her team on here. She wants to close it out in two. Scotland are saying, nah, we're going to three. Oh, there is Steph again at the net, closing off that cross-court angle and uh, doing her job. That's what she's out there for. I can tell you it's 20 past 10 in Scotland at the moment and uh, we've got a lot of people like Finn Donaldson and Kevin Amos, uh, Martin Johnson, Graham Spoet, uh, all watching and cheering Scotland on along with Jen Downs. Come on guys, see if you can get your team over the, ball, over the line here. They've worked so hard to get into this set and into this match and they've got their noses in front. Can they hold it together? Oh, and again, just scrapping and scrambling and just not letting that ball hit the sand and then somehow coming up with that winner in the corner. 18-15, Scotland ahead of Australia. On that serve, just doing some damage right at Sarah's shoulders, throat type area, and really not much she could do. You couldn't get out of the way, but had to make a play on the ball. And uh, Sarah's like, uh, I'm having a timeout. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to reassess and see if I can try and maybe rattle the Scottish team and, uh, and come out and try and be able to claw their way back into the end of this second set. And we're getting lots of great information coming through now. Emma. Emma Waldy tells us that Mel and Lynn train at Portobello Beach. Since Scotland have no indoor beach court, they're up from as early as 4am to make the most of the time they have. So they're more than accustomed to the snow, the rain and the wind. And uh, Monica Krasinski has asked us to give a shout out to Leon, Martin and Thomas, their training partners and their coach. So I'm sure they're all watching. Leon, Martin and Thomas, and uh, I'm sure you'd be pretty proud of the way the girls are fighting at the moment because they are well and truly in this set. They're up 19-15, trailing one set to nil, but um, wow, they're really putting in some effort. All those 4 a.m. starts, Sanj, it's done them in the world of good. That's it, that extra bit of dedication, Roscoe, in the lead up can, uh, can definitely play a part. And look, when you're one set down, being 19-15 up in the second set is a great place to be. What a scramble. They pretty much had to run up into the stands at the back there, uh, Roscoe, to make that dig. And uh, 
and it paid off. They just absolutely have this set under control. 2015, five set points for Scotland to bring this to a third and deciding set. Let's see what the Aussies got to answer. And the, the block half a metre off the net there from Steph Wheeler, but uh, with arms that long and, uh, and being that tall, it was still effective. So Aussie saved one set point. Ah, uh, but Scotland do need the other four and they've closed out this second set, 21-16, and we are going to a third. And I can hear the cheering all the way from Scotland now because uh, we know that there are a lot of people sitting up tonight. It's uh, now coming up to 25 past 10 at night and you would be pretty darn happy about the way the girls fought there after um, the disappointment of throwing away that first set after being in such a dominant position. No mistakes made in the second set though. They had five set points up their sleeve. They only needed one of them and they have leveled this up at one all and this is exciting stuff Sanj Carter second match of the FIVB World Tour event here at Sydney's Manly Beach and we're already into a three-setter